So firstly, probably I want to introduce myself one more time. So I'm Dennis. I'm working for data at an IT more than 10 years. And during all that long path, I'm really excited about technology. And probably all of you excited about technology as well. We had so much different great presentations here. And again, all of them touch point of technology. In IT, we so happy to work in with invention and new things probably before everyone start to use it. So we could be pioneers here or whatever. And blockchain is just one of example of that. Also it's artificial intelligence, robots, and other stuff which we could use in everyday life probably in future or really close to that. Uh, but go to the point, I will speak a little bit about blockchain. Just to be sure, does we have someone here in the room who never heard about blockchain or Bitcoin. Okay, so in this case, I will not go deeply in details and just will provide overview of what is blockchain. And after that, I want to share it with you a few thoughts about that technology. I'm so happy or have a, some luck to be involved in few blockchain projects from the scratch to production and Again, to be honest, right now, blockchain is not so mature technology, so we have not so many, let's say, production-ready products, yeah. Uh, these and previous years, name it by expert and by technical guys, just the age of POCs, because everyone just tried to use that technology. And blockchain start to be so popular, probably just because of Bitcoin phenomenon. Uh, Bitcoin is actually is a part of the future as well. It's a part of digital future. It's first digital currency. And probably five years or six years before, we never could imagine we will have such kind uh, technology around. And this is really exciting. We have like a few bytes of our Winchester or in our hard disks and it costs like a few hundred of pounds or a few hundreds of dollars. And blockchain, it's technology around that. So many startups start to work in this blockchain. I get some numbers from internet and from my experience. It's more than billion dollars investment during this year just in that technology. And that's why it's probably start to be so popular. Uh, and actually the Probably Fry, not the best investor, but he got the point. As soon as you say, okay, I have blockchain in my startup, probably you will get money without any problems, yes. And this is a good thing, but also this is a big problem because right now blockchain is just a buzzword. You could open newspaper, you could switch on TV, you could go to the conference and usually have guy like me who talk about blockchain, yeah. And probably that guy never know about blockchain because you see me just first time and you never know about my experience. And it's so many bad examples how blockchain could be used in the project. And unfortunately, it's provide a bad reputation for technology, not just because it's bad, it's just because it's used that correctly. And during that presentation, I tried to provide a few cases or few examples how we probably should not use blockchain or use it with some, um, let's say, limitations. Uh, but again, if you say it about blockchain, you should firstly understood what is it. It's really simple technology. Uh, it's no invention around that. It's just distributed ledger, as simple as possible. But it has some really interesting features which provide to it possibility to start to be such a great invention. Uh, so firstly, it's fully distributed. So no central authority. And that's probably also why we have that scandals with smart contracts and just guys stole like millions of the dollars in the blockchain and no one could prevent that because this is no banks. This is no like a bank and say, okay, that transaction is impossible and we should just delete it. Uh, here in blockchain, we have no central authority, but also it's a good thing. If you work in a trustless environment where no one trusts to another, uh, 
you could not have central authority, yeah. So because, as I said, you will not trust that authority, and you could use blockchain in that cases. Uh, second thing, it's shared and fully replicated. So if we say it about that, everyone have their own copy, and he or she or it could use it. Uh, just again, as usual, it have some pros and cons here. If you have copy, so you will have full information, and probably you could use it for bad way because you could trace it, could try to stall some information from another guys, or at least you could try to figure out who pay for that. And third things, it's really immutable. And this is a small feature which probably changed the game completely. As soon as you save something into blockchain, it will not be deleted, updated, or somehow change it. We all engineers here, so we understood it's probably not real true. So if you spend, let's say, millions and millions of computer power, ages of computer power, you probably could change that thing inside of blockchain because it's requested from you so many different specific operations. But you will not have any value on that because, it, as I said, you will spend millions of dollars just to try to change something. But also probably as soon as we have in blockchain like a one billion thing inside of that, I don't know, probably some new technology or whatever, probably someone will try to hack it or change it. And this is would be also an interesting quest. Uh, what we usually advise to our clients, friends, uh, you should think before you act. So you should try to understand, is it blockchain good to you or not? We know about that just three or five simple features of blockchain. And we should not try to create like project which save all information on blockchain. It's will not provide to you new, any value. You could use, I don't know, Oracle for all your information. Or you could use like a simple Java application to that. You should try to find some business process which you probably will completely change by blockchain technology. And also it's one of, let's say, hardest point. As soon as you start or try to change something in the business processes, you will have so big problems because no one tried to change or he could be lazy or whatever. But you have to try to find that processes. And I could provide some example, for example, sorry, some examples what we could use as business processes. So I will not go through all that cases in detail, so we could discuss it, I don't know, in the break if you're interested in it, just find me somewhere around coffee machine. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, sorry, I lose my voice. Uh, but one of simple example, if you have some paperwork processes inside of your company, firm, whatever, you could use blockchain instead of that because blockchain actually it's really close to the paper. As soon as you write and down something, something on the paper, you could just burn it, but you could not change it. And that's why probably we have so many different papers in the banks and financial institutions and around the world. And blockchain, the same thing. As soon as you save something in blockchain, you could use it as proof of existence, proof of process, and whatever. Uh, another good example is uh, digital identity. So everyone right now in Europe talk about uh, digital identity, uh, which we will use instead of our passports, inst instead of our cards. And blockchain could be also play his role here. And actually, it's so many, as I said, startups which try to adopt that technology for identity as well uh, and it's such broadly different experience not just in finance it's also in supplier management it's also in healthcare yeah but i will not go deeply in details here and the second good and bad thing in blockchain blockchain it's not like one platform. Yeah, so we have so many different implementation of blockchain. I provide ju just few here, probably most mature or just because I know about them, but we have like 10 or 20 or probably 100 more around. And you could use it, you could uh, 
try to adopt it. But also you should remember if you know, for example, about Ethereum and you already have not of Ethereum in your project, this is doesn't mean you will use Hyperledger because it would be another concept and no standards in that technology. We have just that features as immutability and other stuff around, but it will not be any program sta standards or the platform standards right now. And the second thing, uh, it could be really good documented. It could be well documented. It could provide to you broadly, broadly experience about features. But you should remember about one point. Uh, documentation and reality will not be the same. Uh, usually during our uh, development process in blockchain, we try to do different POCs around. So it, all our blockchain project and each of our blockchain project have their own R&D part. Uh, because you have to check how that technology, how that features will apply in different cases, which places on the critical path of your application of all your development, because you don't want somewhere after spending like a 10 millions and 10 years understood that feature from documentation will not work as you expected and it will completely broke all your business concept. Uh, but also, as I said, it's a good thing because all of that platform is open source. So you could contribute on that community. For example, I personally contribute in Hyperledger and Ethereum a little bit. So if you like open source concept, you could like blockchain as well. And I want to talk also about few challenges which we face it in our projects. Uh, most of them probably so simple to understood. Mo some of them it's also could be a little bit surprise. Uh, just because, uh, as I said, blockchain is not mature, real mature technology. Uh, firstly, point which not mentioned on that slide, but it's really important. Blockchain, it's all about transactions. So if you remember it, technology which originally created for cryptocurrencies, yeah? So all information which you will save in blockchain, it would be somehow linked to the transaction. So you could save metadata around transaction, or you could try to encrypt some information via transaction. For example, say, yes, it would be one coin, no, it would be two coins. But if you use, uh, or if you will use like a public chain, it will cost to you money probably not so big money but if you will have like a hundred transaction inside of them it will cost to you millions to be honest so that's why mostly we use it private chains there you will be a king and you could actually create as much money as you want and use it as much as you want uh, second thing it's no go not good developer tools around yeah so it's just some as i said some created by community tools, yeah. So probably if you want to see a work with mature technology like Salesforce and another, you will not expect the same level of tooling from blockchain. And this is also could be a bad thing because you will spend a lot of time, for example, for environments preparation and other stuff just because you will not have any automation tools around here. Uh, second interesting thing since performance, uh, it could be really a bad surprise for your project because performance in blockchain, it's not so good. Yeah, so we really live in digital world. So we expected like a hundred transaction, million transaction per second, but Bitcoin could not beat seven transaction Per second, yeah. This is have some mathematical reasons. It have some programmatical reasons inside, but that's fact. Ethereum could beat it a little bit, but again, it would not be like a thousand or million transactions. So probably, if you will try to create some like a high frequency trading application, you will not use blockchain for each of your transactions. You could save just ownership of equity or something like that, but 
you will not use blockchain as a whole solution and also some communities right now or some startups try to beat that performance but as soon as they try to beat that performance they lose usually immutability or something like uh as I say, fully distribution because they try to introduce in this case someone who could just sign transactions. Yeah, because signing transactions, it's that's why it takes so long, and why uh, also that's why it take uh, time for creating blocks inside of blockchain. And second thing, it's backward compatibility and environments. As I say, blockchain is fully immutable, and this is one of the great feature but also it's one of the great weaknesses of blockchain because as soon as you create some environment and for example you will add or change some field in the smart contract just add it you have to recreate your blockchain fully and you will lose all your information as soon as you want to change some information inside of the chain you have to again recreate your environment and to be honest this is really painful process and you could not do anything with that uh, and this is, sounds simple, but as soon as you have like a 100 nodes, because every your, your user will have your he or she own node, it would be really painful process just try to deploy all your changes. And you have to get it into the account. Probably you will not provide to your users nodes, you will provide to them just user interfaces or something like that. And one more thing, it's security. Uh, blockchain, not so good in security from different rights perspective. For example, just imagine you have like a database and table without any possibility to grant uh, user roles or user access. Everyone will have full information. And this is good from trust environment because you could trace all information and all your transactions and all your changes but it's really bad when you try to save i don't know some sensitive information inside of blockchain uh, just because you have no chance to somehow delete or just add some rights to access you could use uh, encryption but in this case you again will face performance issues and this is interesting question. Yeah, right now Hyperledger quite actively working on anonymous transactions and another stuff. So probably we could see some revolution around that. But again, if your system will have like uh, different roles inside of that and you want to provide, I don't know, hierarchical role management tools, it's again, probably you will not use blockchain for that. And uh, last point is, regulations because uh, blockchain is quite new technology and it's not good regul regulate right now uh, the good thing here every government tried to play with blockchain for example UK government right now have like a five different project related to blockchain so probably they try to solve regulation things as soon as possible and also other governments try to use blockchain in their own projects as banks and other stuff but right now you never know as soon as you go to production you probably will face huge issues with regulators and they could just prohibit the, your solution just because they could not good say is it is it okay to use it or not for example to save information about your users and it could be issue and probably I really looks like to that guy on that slide because I said blockchain mostly 50 times during that presentation and also my presentation could be sounds a little bit pessimistic but I quite optimistic about blockchain as I said we spend like a million dollars on that technology and it's so exciting to be a pioneer of something so if you want to try to play with blockchain, just go to any community or Hyperledger site or Ethereum site and try to create something new or try to contribute into the project.
Also, if you have good math skills, you could play here because blockchain it's all about mathematics and cryptography. And it's so exciting to try to do something. You could not just create a startup, but also you could try to thinking about how you could apply that technology and probably in future you will be another guy who creates something like a Bitcoin. Right now, never know who created Bitcoin actually and that guy probably a multi-billion man. But it's so, it, it would be in future. And yeah, probably as I said, my presentation will not be so big. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. For someone who knows about blockchain but doesn't know about the technology behind blockchain, could you give a quick explanation on how blockchain actually achieves its premises? For example, uh, the database is supposed to be decentralized, but how uh, does the um, how does how do the individual parts of each user update each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, blockchain is actually really close to torrent technology. So it's peer to peer connection. So, uh, for example, you have like a million nodes and each node know just about few nodes around yes yeah, so or not about all them and another not about another few nodes and as soon as transaction changed or some information changes go through the peer-to-peer -peer connections through all the nodes and actually each of node could create new information. yeah and could create new information and sign the blocks so information inside of blockchain say that like a blocks and uh, they created transactions that after that signed blocks. Why it's immutable? Because it used some clever hash technologies around and they encrypt that information. So you will not have possibility to change that blocks because it during the hash process, it also appeared to use information about previous node and about all previous blocks and it's created uh, additional information each time. So probably to change last record, it will take from you like a day of recalculation one more time. But if you want to change records, which was like a week ago, it will take f probably 10 years for you. Yeah. So that's why that also provide guarantee of immutability about that. And also, to be honest, if we say it about different technology, for example, Hyperledger provides the possibility completely change all algorithm inside of that. So it could be completely different principles regarding how it created, how it signed blocks. But regarding how it communicates each other, it's usually peer to peer. I know about some startups who try to create not peer to peer connection, but in this case, we usually start talk about uh, some central authority again. Um, so basically we've got a, a network of peers, yes? Yeah. Like in Torrent. So yeah. we've got some peers, some nodes, yes? Mm -hmm. And uh, every node has exactly the same chain, right? Yeah. Okay, so one node creates a transaction. Yeah and starts to spread this transaction across the network, yes? Yeah, something like that. Actually, it's a little bit uh, different, yeah, because as I said, they create transaction, create, create. After that, they have to add blocks and they add not just transaction by transaction, they try to accumulate it in some block and they create block every 20 minutes and after that, sign it and save it. Okay, so there's no possibility that uh, one node will add one block and the node from the other part of net will add different block to exactly the same chain. Mm, probably I didn't get your question. It's it again, it's uh, it's possible to create transactions simultaneously, but it would not be about the same because everyone have their own like a wallet. So it could not transfer money from the same wallet, for example. So yeah, it okay, will not but, be. But, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm thinking about something like uh, we've got a map map of nodes, yes, like yeah. dots uh, here on the yeah, desk, yeah. yes, and this this one particular dot uh, will s- try to save or save the transaction d- into the chain, yes. Mm-hmm. So this transaction will spread across the network, but uh, during this time, uh, that node is not um, so close enough, and um, that node. The, does not uh, have this information about this transaction and wants to start its own tr- transaction, new one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now we've got two transactions from opposite sides coming coming together, and um, how it happened that uh, we end up with exactly the same chain across the whole net? Yeah, it's uh, would not be exactly the same chain in each moment because as you said for example mm-hmm. one try to create another transaction and probably also we understood it's no magic around so we could not immediately have uh, the same results on the yes, same exactly. so it mm-hmm. could be some small shift but as i said it's save it and signed it by some processes inside of the chain so before it's completely saved into the chain it have to be signed and it takes some time and it's signed it by some special nodes actually every node could sign new blocks but mm-hmm. also they have some synchronization between each other okay okay thank you uh, oh i could go deeply in details and technical details <laughs> but <laughs> uh, i think i got it thank you i got my personal question uh do you have any uh, specific examples of some projects which use blockchain not as general ledger not just history that's available for everyone but for some uh, different purposes uh yes F- uh, for example you could use uh, blockchain for voting processes so you could try to create some i don't know election mechanism around blockchain we all know about election in us so we could use it the same technology here all information about all votes will be saved in blockchain it would be immediately available or close to immediately available to everyone and also it would be fully traceable and again immutable so we will not have any issues with trying to figure out where my voice going why it's going like that and so it could be really fully trans- transparent for everyone 